Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing good. Today we're going to do part two of this like making a song video series. I guess it's sort of a series. Um, and we're going to continue this song that we were working with before in the drums video. And we're going to go through how I would add guitars to something like this. Um, so let's jump right in, I guess. This is the exact same song as we were working on. I haven't really done much to it. There is a lead part in here that's this little piece down here, which I've muted for the time being. Um, the reason why that's in there is because I have tried to record this video once already. OBS just decided it was gonna kill my audio despite me changing no settings between videos. So I finally got this to work again, hopefully. Um, so I've left that guitar lead in there because it was quite a nice lead, but all the other parts, we're gonna do that from scratch again to flesh out this song and then Kind of go from there really. So first things first, before we jump into actually writing guitar parts to flesh out the song, I want to talk about my approach to writing guitar for songs, especially for writing Project Air songs. It obviously does differ genre to genre as it would with drums, as you'd imagine. But when writing Project Air songs, my approach with guitars is very, very simple. I don't really like writing com super complex guitar parts um, just for one big recording. Sometimes that will happen, but for the most part, I'd say nine times out of 10, my approach is recording lots of really, really simple parts that aren't moving around loads and letting them sort of all interact with each other and then using that as a sort of deconstructive and constructive process to create a full structure of a song and see how these kind of different parts end up interacting with one another. Because I think that that's, for me, com I like complexity through layers of simplicity more than I like just complexity for the sake of complexity. If the song needs it and you want to write something complex, obviously you can do that. But my approach is really just creating lots of simple little parts that have a little bit of movement to them and then just seeing how those all interact, whether it be that I pan them around the stereo field or things like that. Obviously when it comes to writing lead parts or even just using improvised parts, it can be a bit more complex and you can have a lot more movement. But for me, I think a lot of what you hear in the sort of soundscapes that I create with guitar stuff that I do for Project Air, it's all about like creating this sort of scene out of lots of different pieces and how you kind of add and take away from that. So it might be that certain things get muted for certain sections of the song and then you get a full section at one point, but you might never hear actually all the parts that I've created in these layers kind of coming together. So what we're gonna do is once I've talked through the tools that I use, whether it be software, guitars and stuff like that, um, I wanna talk a little bit about that first and then we're gonna go through the process of writing five or six simple guitar parts and then we can sort of see how different combinations of those can create different feels within the song and how we can actually start to use those to make a full structure. We're not going to do a full structure of this song in this video. I'm thinking of doing that for a part three. If people want to see how I might take a little eight bar, 16 bar loop and turn it into a full sort of two and a half, three minute song, because I think that there's enough to talk about there when it, when it comes to adding little details and sort of things that can make the song interesting and keep it interesting and just all the little transition pieces um, we can do those in a separate part but for this we're going to focus on the guitars and keep it strictly in sort of an 8 16 bar loop sort of section so when it comes to guitars there are obviously a bunch of different things that you can do you can have an actual amp and mic it up in your studio if you want I never do that. It's very, very rare that I do that. I've done that mostly when I've been producing for other artists, but I have never really done it myself. Any guitar you hear on, whether it be an Air song, a Project Air song, or any of my other aliases, I've always been using amp sims. Pretty much since 2013, I haven't mic'd up an amp for my own music because I just haven't seen the benefits, to be honest with you. And in terms of guitars that I have, I do have quite a few guitars now, but for the most part with Project Air, the guitars that I use the most have been my Fender Player Telecaster uh, and my Fender Player Strat that I got on Reverb, which has a few modifications to it with some American parts, but is mostly still just a Fender Player Stratocaster. And if you have yet to actually buy a guitar and you're thinking about what to get, I'm probably not the best person to give advice, but I will say that you don't need to spend crazy amounts of money on a guitar. Does a 2000 pound guitar sound better than a 500 pound guitar? Absolutely. Most of my guitars though have ended up being around that sort of four or 500 pound mark. Um, but that's, there's still something to be said for guitars that cost, you know, maybe two, 300 pounds as well. Very, very entry level guitars can still sound amazing. Um, I have an, Art, uh, an Ibanez Artcore AF55. That's like a sort of hollow body that I use on a few songs, which is 
lovely for the money. It was really, really cheap. You can even look at things like Squire Affinity Telecasters, Stratocasters and things like that, and they will still sound great, especially when run through a decent amp sim and with some good effects and stuff on there. And the thing is, you can still make pretty much any type of guitar work. So on my first EPs as Project Arrow, I was using a Gibson SG, which is probably not the most like lo-fi sounding guitar. It's it's running humbuckers. It's you know something that I got when I was a metal guitarist, but I still made it work in my own sort of way. And I think that it gave those first couple of EPs a really unique flair that you don't hear on my more recent stuff where it's all kind of single coil guitars like Telecasters and Stratcasters. If you are interested in me doing like a gear rundown, I'm thinking of doing like a studio tour. I also recently built a pedal board, which is over there. And I recently got an Epiphone Sheraton 2 over there, which is a guitar I'm absolutely loving at the moment. So I can run through all the guitars and effects and stuff like that. But everything we're going to do today is going to be in the box and we're going to use oof, this, this little lovely Fender player Telecaster. This is one of the first guitars that I bought for myself through the work I've been doing as Project Air and it has remained one of my favorite guitars to play. I love playing it live. It's just a really, really lovely guitar. I have a bunch of stickers that I've put over the back of it but for the most part I've kept the front, front nice and clean. Um, I'm running flat wound strings on this, I just find that they're really nice and clean sounding. They're very good for like jazzy stuff as well, but I just, I love how they feel to play them. Um, you just don't have as much bend range on them. So highly recommend flat wound strings. They just, they sound so, so lovely. And you don't get the slidey string noise, which is also pretty cool. So now that we've talked through guitars, um, we are just going to jump into Studio One and I'm going to talk to you about the AmpSim software that I use and some of the effects that I might use for guitars. Um, for the most part, I like to keep things as in the box as I can. And most of that is all being done these days for me in Guitar Rig 6. Guitar Rig 5, Guitar Rig 6, they're kind of, you know, the sounds that I use are pretty much there in both versions. So if you have Guitar Rig 5, don't worry, it's not like you're missing out on anything crazy. It's just a bit prettier and a tiny bit clunkier, if I'm honest, but maybe that's just my computer. I don't know. And I'll be completely honest with you, for pretty much all of Project Air, the guitar tone sound has been based on this Clean Cave preset. I do tweak it ever so slightly. There are different things that you can tweak within the preset, whether it be the delay times, the delay... Uh, feedbacks, the mix of the delays, the mix of the reverbs, but it's just a really nice sounding preset that on its own does just sound really playable and it's just got a lovely sort of reverb to it. Sorry, I'll get carried away. It's just, it's something that, again, with a lot of these things, it's with the sounds that I'm using, it's like trying to find sounds that just keep inspiring me. And this this sound has pretty much been the basis of all Project Air um, guitar tones. I have been starting to experiment with other amp simulators recently, whether it be um, STL Tone Hub, which I started using when I was recording some punk, pop punk stuff. Amplitude 5, I got pretty recently as well. It's quite clunky I'm finding, but it does have, I think, some of the most realistic sounding amp setups and has a lot of modularity to it, which I love, that you don't necessarily have as much of with Guitaric. I think Guitaric is something that I find does things like big ambient dreamy reverb tones and really weird tones as well. So like if you're making distorted heavy stuff, um, it's got some great, like f just really, really freaky tones in there, which I love. Um, I've also been messing with some neural DSP stuff as well with their arch types. Um, I've been trying out the Corey Wong um, pack or plugin. I don't know if they're different plugins, different packs, um, how you'd word it, but those are also really, really good as well. But the thing I love about something like Guitar Rig is that you can really craft tones and like choose different amp models and ma different cabinets. You can even create like a cabinet mix where you might have like two different ca uh, cab styles, two different microphones on them, change the microphone placements and things like that. It's not quite as in-depth as something like Amplitude, but if you want to go really in-depth with Guitar Rig, there is those options there. And if you want to go crazy, crazy in-depth, that's when you might want to start looking at something else. But especially for like that lo-fi um, and sort of like chill ambient sort of stuff, the, the plugins that are inside Guitar Rig are just amazing. The distortions are great. You have great reverb options. There's a great shimmer reverb, which I don't know if that was there in Guitar Rig 5. I think that might be a new thing. The Realm reverb is wonderful. There's just some, some really, really great stuff in here. This Ice Verb as well, which is on 100% mix on this preset, sounds just awesome. Um, 
but yeah like guitar egg it is just wonderful and then you can feed it into other things so something that i do a lot of the time um is feeding guitar egg into things like valhalla shimmer um so it might be something like this and you can make some really crazy stuff with that um it's it's like having a great tone in guitar rig is cool and you can obviously go crazy with it but you can keep adding to it um i recently picked up the the strymon big sky plugin uses a ton of cpu um but this is a really 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 gorgeous reverb i see why everyone wants the pedal but this is a lot cheaper than the pedal so stuff um so you can do a lot with it um but guitar rig is the the kind of that core of my sound um so yeah that's kind of my approach i guess in terms of uh, the guitars that i use in the tone and so now let's jump into some writing um so we're using the exact same song as before which is this So what we're going to do to that is we are going to just write a bunch of parts that are maybe two or three notes that just have interesting rhythms on them. So I'm going to go through and just find a few parts and maybe record up to like six. Sometimes I might not want to do quite as many, um, but we're just going to go through and just find some stuff that works. So we're going to do our first part, which is just literally doing a fifth on an F sharp here on the D and G string. that as well. So each time I'll usually mute the last part so I'm not being completely swayed by everything I've been playing so far. Okay cool and then we've got our second part which is just going to be this sort of like repeating arp uh, using the uh, I don't know the 11th fret on the D and G string and then the uh, 14th fret on the B string. part I've got this little idea that I just found that's kind of around what I was just doing with the little art but we're going to do something that just sort of like noodles around these and just kind of creates a bit of an interesting rhythm. There we go and then on to a fourth part I forgot to mute the uh the up while we did that but you know whatever right i don't always follow my own advice i'm terrible for a fourth part i'm just going to sort of like keep like a steady rhythm over these three notes on the d string which is uh the sixth fret the eighth fret and the ninth fret For our fifth part, we're going to just kind of noodle around these. Which is the sixth fret on the G string, the seventh and the ninth on the B string. And for our sixth and final part, we're just going to create like a little something around there, which is using the uh, 13th, 14th, 16th fret on the E string and the 14th fret on the B string. So that's now six different kind of repeating guitar parts that are just kind of moving around one very simple idea. And the benefit of this is that when it comes to mixing them, 
once we start EQing and things like that, they're not going to move around their sort of frequency range too much. So it makes mixing feel quite easy for me in that you've got these parts that are just there more for atmosphere than they are kind of intricate leads that your ears are designed to really hook onto. And they're just designed to create like a bit more of a soundscape. So because they're not going to move, once we've EQ'd them, you can sort of just like place them around and have fun with them in the stereo field and just in the song structure once we get to that. And just as a bit of an illustrative thing, this is what all those six parts that we've just recorded sound like played together at once. <laughs> tell right now it's a bit messy it's a bit all over the place and we need to go through and organize the parts probably one of the first things that I would do is find two parts that are kind of similar in what they're doing whether they both, they both be playing something really high up on the fretboard or something and then kind of mix them down a little bit and pan one left pan one right and start creating a bit of like a stereo image sort of sound for them so those two there the kind of arp that we started with and then that last part that we recorded. Sound quite complimentary. So we could pan one to the right, pan the other off to the left. And immediately there, once we now listen to those two, let's put them next to each other and just color code them so we know they sort of match up a little bit. We'll make them lime green, the disgusting, horrible green. And let's meet the others. probably lose a bit of lows in some of these as well. Okay, so that's already sounding quite nice. There was also this part here, I think it was. Which I think has like a sort of like semi lead sort of quality to it. Like it almost sounds like a part like that could be not like a focal element, but like something that's just kind of there sitting quite nicely. So let's add a bit of compression to it. I think those three would actually sound quite nice together. And already it's starting to immediately sound like it's like it's got a, like a bit of a vibe to this whole section now. It's sounding much more like developed already. So let's listen to some of the other parts. Feeling with a busier part like that, we could like telephone it and make it really kind of like almost na kind of nasally, I guess. Let's just sort out that resonance as well. We could probably also get away with the certified lo-fi classic of sticking an RC20 on it. Turn off the noise. And then I'm thinking as well, put a Mondo mod on that and have it pan all the way around the stereo field. So it's like really nice and subtle. Maybe even put like a subtle shimmer reverb on it. And then let's just check an EQ on it just to make sure nothing is creeping back in from the reverb. There we go. And then let's listen to these other two. And I'm really liking that part. I think that that part is one of my favorite parts. So that's something that I would kind of make as like a sort of alt lead um, and call it that for the time being. With a part like that, I'm actually interested to see two things. So let's create a duplicate of it. 
And with this first one, uh, with the second one even, let's transpose it up an octave. So what we're doing is we're actually transposing the audio up an octave before it's even hitting the, the amps in. Because if you think in terms of the, the chain of where that's gonna, where that transposition is going to hit, it's going to be happening before it goes into the amp sim. So we're taking a, a dry, a super dry DI signal and then feeding it into an amp sim. And that's when we get a sound like this. Definitely a bit of resonance on that. And we can even go crazy and like try transposing it up like two octaves. So let's go 24 semitones. And then like, let's like shimmer it. That makes me think 24 is probably too many. Let's go back to 12. <laughs> There we go, and that's created like a sort of drone that sounds really, really nice. So now we have the copy of it, which we can probably just get rid of for the time being. It's this one, right? Yeah, let's remove that. So now we have all of our guitars. Let's to turn on everything except the alt lead um, and see how it all sounds now. So there's this one, which is the, the little like three note lead, we'll call it for the time being, just to differentiate. So what we could do, right, is we could, where we've got these, this alt lead and these, uh, this kind of little three note lead, let's actually make it where they hand off to one another within the eight bar loop, just to like illustrate how that's gonna feel for like creating difference between sections. So even, even though nothing else in the song is changing, it's literally just those guitar leads. Let's see how that feels. Immediately, it's got a it's got a bit of a sort of change in vibe between those moments, and it's like if you could add in some sort of like transition whether it be a cymbal or a little drum fill or stopping the drums for a little bit once we go into making a full structure that's a change we can make happen um, and you can also at that point start removing some other elements so we can take those uh, left and right arps and get rid of those for a second and immediately we're just by just adding and taking away different things we're creating these different ideas for sections which is something that I just love doing. There we go. And just from that, we've already made a really interesting sounding guitar section. And then we have the lead that I had already recorded. So if the original video had worked, we would have gotten this, but I think we've gotten some better parts with this attempt. So this is the lead that I recorded. I don't really remember it. So let's, let's experience it for the first time. <laughs> definitely needs a bit of compression. There we go. I'm actually really excited to turn this into a full song, so we will probably do a part three, um, especially if people are interested in seeing me take this kind of short section and turn it into like a two and a half minute song. And then maybe we'll check it out for free or something at the end of it, that could be kind of fun. Um, maybe even put the stems out there. I don't know, that could be fun. Um, but yeah, that is, that's pretty much uh, how things sort of work for me in terms of making guitars. It's like quite a simplified version of it. And obviously I might spend more time if it's like a, a more important song, but that sort of approach and the, the core concepts of it is something that I wanted to present in quite a basic way because you can take that and you can really build on it and find things that you can do that that always sound good to you because there's a lot of those sorts of parts that I end up playing very similar things for different songs and I don't think that for me like 
maybe this is me justifying kind of some level of like laziness in music, but I think that having those sorts of like go-to techniques and things that I can put in there, that's the the sort of ingredients that make it feel like a project air song. And that to me, like, I mean, the fun, right, of having different aliases for me has always been finding the things that kind of give that project its identity, like what makes something sound like a Project F song versus like, you know, a little music song or one of my other aliases, right? And those sorts of things that I do on Project Air songs, I try not to do in other projects. So I love kind of creating this sort of like musical cinematic universe and that these, these things that you can do that immediately it's like if someone wants me to not really touch their collab too much in terms of like changing too much melodic melodic content but i can add things that can make it sound a bit more project air ish in like certain ways so having things like this where it's just building these layers up and kind of adding and taking away i think it's like helped me hone in on what like my sound is guitar wise because it's especially in like lo fi and chill you're not playing like crazy sweet picking arpeggios and stuff like that you are generally playing quite simplistic stuff um obviously it depends a little bit if you're kind of doing more like neo soul inspired stuff or like jazz inspired stuff um but for what i'm doing where i'm mostly playing major pentatonic scale stuff it's like it's all pretty straightforward um but I hope this helped. I hope that this was interesting because this is pretty much how I approach guitar in, in all cases. Um, and then once I build something that might be eight, 16 bars, it's just improvising on top of that. You know, you're creating something that feels quite finished and feels quite fleshed out so that when you come to writing something more complex, whether it be a lead line, a vocal line, a piano line, whatever it may be, right? Your top line melody, you can sort of improvise it and feel it out. And I think that for me, when I'm trying to write mu music that is emotive and expressive, which is really my brand, you know, it's kind of that like it really heavily emotive stuff. Um, writing by feel, I think, is the most important ingredient. And this always comes back to that, I know, but it is for me, it's the core concept of my music is r making something that doesn't take crazy amounts of effort so that I can write something that feels really expressive to me and that I can really, really connect with emotionally on top of that, rather than it being like the science, you know, where I'm sitting there and thinking about theory and thinking about keys and stuff. It's just finding ways in which I can play comfortably, but, but play in a sort of very non-clinical, very expressive sort of way. I'm rambling a lot, but I hope that this helped. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. Uh, if you definitely want to give us a like for a part three and we'll fit, we'll turn this into a full song. We might not do mixing, but we will at the very least, um, we'll make it into a full structure and then go from there. And then if people want the stems, yeah, I don't know, let me know. Um, but yeah, any questions, any other videos you'd like me to do topic, uh, any other topics you'd like me to do videos on, um, hopefully not speaking properly. Um, yeah, let me know. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.